platform, platform 3, will be the 2330 Trans Urban Line service to Seldist. This service will run non-stop to Ruckdium Square. The 2330 Trans Urban Line service to Seldist will leave from platform 3 and Ruckdium will be the next stop. Oh, this looks riveting. What? Uh, listen, Greg, you haven't seen that Astro Sexton thingy, have you? Hmm, you were polishing it earlier on. I know. Ah. There we are. Now, hold the corner of this map, would you? What are you going to do? That thing doesn't actually work, it does it? It may appear somewhat and like the TARDIS, you mean. Ha ha, Master Holmes. But it's sturdy and reliable. Oh, nothing like the TARDIS, then. Uh, just hold the map. Now, I just look through here, and oh, the focusing's gone a bit wonky. Hold on a minute. Now, I'm not surprised. You, you can't see, see much. The TARDIS is apt to be a little dodgy on the navigational side of things, so it never hurts to stop and get out, take a peek at the stars with this. Doctor! I must have some dust on the lens. Uh, I was trying to tell you, Doctor, we're in some sort of tunnel. Oh, yeah. Mm. It's an underground station. Look, Rufford Square Station, Trans Urban Line Network. Hmm, don't know. It can't be the London Underground. No. Lucky we didn't land on the line. The 2340 Trans Urban Line service to Ruckdium Square will leave from Platform 3, and Steel Centre will be the next stop. Ah, oh, good. We can follow the passengers to the surface. We don't want to get lost, do we? Why do we want to get to the surface, Doctor? Um, well, we can't see the sky down here, can we? Oh. Oh, come on. We could be waiting for ages. There's no one in it. Automated driver, I expect. No, 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 I mean no passengers. Well, we'll have to make our own way to the surface. Come on. This looks like the way out. Don't you find it worrying? What? There being no people. No, it's probably late at night. Yes, but even so... Oh, stop fussing. Come on. rather like the London Underground, isn't it? Mm, without the pinstripe brigade, there. Oh, no. Well, I shan't miss that. No, no. We haven't got a ticket. We can bear the barrier. But we haven't got any money. Oh, we'll just have to act stupid. <laughs> well, I'll leave the talking to you, then. Thank you. Judging 
by the automated trains, I assume the ticket collection is automatic as well. Well, that's the way out over there. Hmm, through that gateway. Maybe they don't have tickets here. Come on. Ow! Doctor? Huh? Doctor! Uh, what, what happened? I don't know. It seems that just as soon as you got to the gateway, well, there was a little, well, I suppose you'd call it laser beam between those two posts. Can you walk? Uh, oh, no. I, I, couldn't have been a, a laser. Uh, no sign of burns. Oh, dear. Not much chance of fair dodging here, is there? No. Rather an unpleasant method, though. You know, I'm beginning not to like this place. Let's go back to the TARDIS. It's obvious that we can't get to the surface. Don't give up so easily. Uh, oh, that's better. Oh, I can... The feeling's coming back to my legs already. Ah, there we are. You don't look too steady. Do you want a hand? Mm, thanks. I should be all right in a minute. It must have been some kind of molecular agitator. I expect I can deactivate it. Hmm. Vandal. Well, there's no one about. You're looking for trouble, aren't you? For once, we should just give up and go and find somewhere altogether more pleasant. We haven't seen the surface yet. It's probably a gleaming technological edifice. Ah, I see how this thing works. Greg, could you just give it a swift boot about here? No. Oh, go on. I'm not steady enough yet. Too bad. I'm not getting my feet blown off, thank you very much. What was that? What? Oh, nothing. Just the escalator. Are you sure? Yes. Now, come on. Give this thing a kick. All oh, right. If it'll make you happy. Success! Come on. After you. There. Perfectly safe. Oh, now give me a hand up these stairs. Greg Holmes, male nurse. Well, you've discovered your true vocation then, haven't you? Now, up we go. It is late. Night time in the big city. So where's the nightlife? There aren't even any street lights on. Hmm. You know, we could be anywhere. Well, it's a modern city. They look like skyscrapers to me. Hmm. We should have brought a torch. Well, never mind. I'll just take those readings and we'll be on our way. Hand me the sextant, will you? Oh, no. I must have dropped it by that ticket barrier. Don't worry. I'll get it. Oh, thanks. I'm still a bit shaky. Invalid. Now oh, then, pity this chart isn't fluorescent. Uh, I think that's Orion. There we are, one sextant. What's that? Bird. Doctor. So, that's a rhyme. This must be... Doctor? Like Greg? Yes? Doctor, there's something coming up the escalators. What do you mean? I don't know. It's a sort of mass of mass? something. Mass? Yes, there's loads of it. It must have filled up all the lower level. Well, show me. <sighs> no way. It's probably at the bottom of those stairs by now. I wonder where it's from. I don't from. much care about that. All I know is it's coming this way. There it is. Oh, that's not what you mean. Come on, Doctor. I wonder what he wants. Doctor! Uh, oh, you'd better give me a hand, Greg. Are we safe yet? Yes, yes, I think so. Oh, God. My legs are still playing up. That disruption field must have been more literal than I thought. Do you think that stuff's still following us, Greg? Well, it wasn't showing any signs of stopping. Mind you, I can't hear it anymore. No. I wonder what it is. I wonder what it's done to the TARDIS. Well, I don't think there's any cause for worry there. For all its faults, the TARDIS is pretty well indestructible. 
Well, it was last time it was put to the test. Mm, that's very encouraging. Anyway, even if it is all right, how are we going to get to it? Good point. That stuff had a rather acidic smell about it. So we can't just go wading through it. Precisely. First things first, let's take that sextant reading. Here you are. Thank you. Uh, let's hope it's still working. Ah, yes. Now, wait a minute. What could you see? Well, I don't need a sextant to see that. Look! Aircraft of some sort? Formation. About a mile away, I'd say. They're dropping bombs. What? They're bombing the city, look. Uh, we've got to find some shelter. There's another underground station, Steel Centre, over there. Right, come on. What if that stuff's down there? We'll just have to hope it isn't. Hurry up, Doctor. of it. it. Your momentum took you right through the beam to the other side. At least we seem to be safe down here. There's none of that yellow stuff either. Well, let's not count our blessings before they're hatched. Now, you just sit tight over your side while I try to deactivate this barrier and get through to you. It's a little difficult because I'm on the wrong side of it. Now, it shouldn't take long, though. Then what? One thing at a time, Greg. I suppose we could go down into the tunnel, see if we could get into that other station. Ruford Square, hmm. That Gunji stuff might have moved on by now. It's a possibility. How are your legs now? It's like I've got chronic pins and needles. Oh, don't worry, they'll soon get better. But mine are almost back to normal now. Ah, ah that's that bit out of the way. Now, let me see. Um, What's going on in this place? Uh, yes. Uh, it is a little strange, isn't it? I don't think we're on Earth, do you? No. Uh, well, it might be your future. With time travel, you never can tell. Hmm. Any luck? Uh, I'm afraid not. You see, this is an altogether different mechanism. Look around you. This station has undergone considerable modernization. There's that thing, I suppose. Just my luck. What is? Boring. Hmm. Nothing is doctor-proof, Greg. Ow! <laughs> Are you sure, Doctor? Now, I think I'll have to do a bit of lateral thinking. The bombing seems to have stopped. Yes. I wonder why they were bombing an empty city. Maybe they didn't know it was empty. It isn't empty. We're here. I can think of more efficient ways of killing two people. What about our gurgling friend? Of course! Yes, that must be it. The city was evacuated because that stuff got into the underground. Oh. I don't know. It probably just started eating commuters, so the city authorities decided to evacuate first and ask questions later. Well, after they'd flattened their own city. Interesting theory, Greg. Can you walk yet? <laughs> no, not really. Pity. Why? Now, this thing's proving somewhat obstructive. Oh, you mean it's got you beat? <laughs> I'm afraid so. Now, I can see what needs to be done, but I need to get to the other side to do it, and I can't get my hand round without activating the disruptor beam. Tricky situation, isn't it? Doctor, look! Oh, dear. It must have got through the tunnel. Perhaps it knew we were here. What? I don't know. I, I sensed something before, but it's stronger this time. Doctor, it's getting closer. Can't you switch that barrier thing off? I'm trapped. I make your way over here. Perhaps you can deactivate it. I can't. I'll tell you what to do. Come on, Rick. You can make it. I can hardly move. You've got to. It's catching up. I can't, Doctor. What do you want? No. No, I won't. I won't. Doctor? Doctor, what are you talking about? It, it, it wants to absorb us, Greg. Make us part of it. I can't move. It's gone. I, I don't understand. Where did it go? It wanted to absorb us. I could, I could see its thoughts. You don't look very well. 
It's still here. No, it, it's gone, Doctor. One second I was about to be covered in gunge, the next... Well, never mind that now. Everything's all right. No, it's still here in my mind. I can feel it. What's happening? Oh, don't ask me. I thought you were the genius. Well, that stuff seems to have done me one favour. I think it shot my legs back into life. Not bad, eh? I'm walking, Doctor. Doctor? What's the matter with you? We'll have to get some fresh air. Fresh air? Doctor, I'm still stuck on the wrong side of the bat. Doctor? Come back! Oh, no. What is the matter with him? All trains will be converging. All trains will be converging. Passengers for the centre must join the trans-urban network at Steel Centre. All trains will be converging. Steel Centre? That's this station. must join the trans-urban network. Converging. That's it. All trains converging. I'm glad it makes sense to you. We must join the train at this station. Why? Where is the centre anyway? Oh, Doctor... Look out! What's the matter with you? You walk straight through the barrier. My legs. Help me, Greg. We must get down the escalators to the train. Why? All the trains are converging at the centre. Isn't it obvious? Hmm? You idiot. I'm not going anywhere until you start behaving normally. What could be more normal than catching the train? We can't be late, can we? To tell you the truth, I don't really care. I'm so irresponsible. Now help me get to the escalators. All right, all right. But I'm getting off at the next stop. Why? Because that's where the TARDIS is. What do you want the TARDIS for? So that we can go. Go? We can't just go. We've got to face up to our responsibilities. Come on. Trains imminent. Trains imminent. Trains imminent. train is overdue. I'm sure the train is overdue. Typical, typical trans-urban line. If the city authorities spent less money on socially responsive campaigns and more on getting the trains to arrive on time, well, we'd all be a lot better off. Will you stop gabbling? What has happened to you? Ah, oh, at last. Come on, come on. Still no passengers around. Come on. Look, Doctor, we don't really want to go to this centre place or wherever it is, do we? Morning, Charles. Difficult crossword today. Have you seen the headlines? You're talking to an empty seat. Rupert Square. It's that station. There's the TARDIS. This train does not stop at Rupert Square. What? Oh, no. This train does not stop at Ruford Square. I know that. This train goes straight to the centre. The centre of what? What do you mean? Russell, how are you, old man? Good. New car? Excellent. Doctor, stop it. I see Hardwick is up for promotion. Stop it. It's that stuff, isn't it? You said it was in your mind that it wanted to absorb us. It's done something to your mind. What? I don't know. But you've got to snap out of it. Profit We've margins got to leave up. This place. Labour costs down. Six new cars on the way. Redecoration for the boardroom. Remember that stuff, Doctor. It smells of acid. It'll burn if you touch it. Protective garments are supplied for the benefit of the workforce to ensure high productivity. And those planes bombing the city. The city is the centre of the financial world. It's been flattened. Massive redevelopment program required. Estimate low cost, high rise housing. The city has been bombed. War is the continuation of business by other means. Redecorate the boardroom. We are nearing the center. Arrival is imminent. We are nearing the center. Arrival is imminent.
consultation with the workforce is standard procedure. All suggestions are noted. You have to remember the TARDIS. Obsolete mode of transport. No, it isn't. It's your pride and joy, remember? Totally undesirable for a board member's personal vehicle. Board member? You're not a board member. You're the doctor. You're a traveller. You want to explore, to learn. A lifestyle undesirable. You are an undesirable. You're always in trouble. You attract it. You go around looking for it. All this board member rubbish is something this place has done to you. I must get to the centre. Why? Why must you? I mustn't be late. Why not? Selection complete. Conglomerate executive rating recommended. Proceed to centre. You've been selected? Yes. I have been selected. What is conglomerate? The centre. I see, the centre of the city. Of everything. And that's where we're going. I am summoned to meet the chairman of the board. Boardroom appointment processed. So we're going to the boardroom. That is where I am going. You are deselected. Non-executive potential. Species type incompatible. Selected one. He will accompany you to the examination room. Conglomerate drudgers are arriving to restrain him. Restrain? Doctor, come on, let's make a run for it. We must go to the examination room. No! You must break free from this conglomerate rubbish. Let go of me. Doctor, over there. Hovering robot. Conglomerate drudgers. Restrain the non executive. No! Get these things off me! Doctor! Ow! Ah! Do not struggle. The chairman is waiting. Where is the chairman? Look, Doctor, this is getting a little out of hand, don't you think? Just get these marauding hovercrafts off me and bring me back up there. Doctor! What, what happened, what happens to the, to the non-executive? He awaits judgment. Exam time begins. Look at the display panel. Speak your answers. Problem. I see, this is a plan of the city. What's happening? It must be those aeroplanes bombing the city. Yes. City devastated by foreign aggressor. Begin solution. Right. Um, redevelopment. No, not like that. Relocate workforce dwellings on factory perimeters. Establish outer green belt area, followed by executive dwellings. No, bigger. Good. Eliminate elected city authority buildings, establish central committee linking all areas of industrial and commercial management. Move workforce dwellings closer to places of work. Reduce public transport network. Good. Now estimate maximum cost of all factors outlined in preliminary plan. I don't believe it. I feel worse than I ever did after... How's rugby? This is where I start wondering where I am all over again. Time travelling gets distinctly tedious sometimes. <laughs> Doctor? Doctor? No, I didn't expect him to be around just when I needed him. He's probably just got his first enormous wage packet. Hold on, this is weird. It looks as if I'm in some sort of huge three-dimensional map. Oh, I am. And what's more, it looks like a map of that city we were in. Plan complete. Top score. Excellent. Wait a minute. No, you're destroying my work. The perfect corporate state and... You've destroyed it! No, stop! Oh, no, 
don't know what a space invader feels like. Someone's demolishing the map. I'm stopped. I surrender. Come on. Who is responsible for this? Foreign aggressor. But my plan included impregnable defense shields. Stop this bombing. Stop. At last. Can anyone hear me? Can anyone hear me? Saboteur leaks defense codes to foreign aggressor. Sabotage by a spy? Who is this traitor? I demand to know. Tell me. Hello? Anyone there? Is this the traitor? But it's Greg. Greg Holmes. I... The saboteur must die. Implement Drudger anti-espionage operation. All Drudgers seek destroy saboteur. Ident programmed. He must be destroyed. De he must... Be, uh, I must not dis destroy. Greg? 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 Doctor? Doctor? Is that you? Where are you? Are you alright? Run, Greg. Run. Get back to... to the TARDIS before... Before what? Doctor! Anyway, the TARDIS is back at that tube station. Before I... Oh no, Drudgers. Doctor, the Drudgers are here. Too late. Confirm ident. Excellent. Destroy the saboteur. Greg, run! I don't know where to run to. Everything looks the same. I suppose... Oh, look! What is that? Confirm, Ident. Confirm. Alien body discovered in tube train network. A sabotage machine. Doctor, they've brought the TARDIS here. It's the TARDIS. The TARDIS? Ident confirmed. Destroy the sabotage machine. No, Doctor, no. Remember, it's your pride and joy, not a sabotage machine. It's the TARDIS. The TARDIS! TARDIS. I, I... I must carry out company policy. Sabotage machines and saboteur to be destroyed immediately. Doctor, you can't. It's me, Greg. And this is the TARDIS. You can't let them make you do this. Remember Nadia. Nadia. Who... Killed the TARDIS Greg. I remember. Judges, return to control. Judges, return to control. You have failed the exam, Doctor. The chairman wishes to see you. No, no. <laughs> is just full of surprises. If only I had the key to the TARDIS. The doctor did say it was indestructible. I would have been safe in there. Is this what you want? Doctor! The TARDIS key! But how did you get away? Doctor, behind you, drudges! Remain still and they won't hurt you. Good. Now, carefully, catch. Good. Well done, Greg. Now back up slowly to the sabotage machine. Sabotage machine? Oh, no. Shut up. You will not undermine my loyalty to conglomerate this time. I have one chance to redeem myself in the eyes of the chairman. Drudger, give me the disintegrator. Thank you. 
Now, Saboteur, you, your machine, and its key will be disintegrated. No chance. This thing's indestructible and I'm getting into it. Well done, Greg. What? Doctor? <laughs> Doctor, you are back to normal. Normal? What an insult. I'm never normal. It's that stuff again. He's the chairman of the board. Have you got that door open yet? I have. Yeah, well, come on then. I know I'm going to regret asking this, but you couldn't enlighten me as to what on earth has been going on for the past hour or so, could you? Oh, business as usual for the multi-galactic conglomerate empire. Oh, uh, they do that every day then, do they? Oh, yes. We have been a couple of unexpected trainees at the Conglomerate Training School for Aspiring Executives. I'm afraid you didn't make the grade. You were the lucky one. You mean you knew all the time? Gracious, no. Not even I'm that clever. No, the chairman of the board had a friendly, headmasterly gurgle in my ear. He said that if I destroyed my past life, he'd overlook my little flirtation with treachery since I was such a promising student and he had a nice little middle management job lined up for me on Altair Soros. Good prospects? Oh, excellent. Unsophisticated, willing workforce, badly managed competition. I could have been a millionaire. And all you had to do was kill me and destroy the TARDIS. Yes, that's all. I mean to say, what's friendship and contentment when there's money at stake? You're sure you're fully recovered? Yes. You know... There's something reassuringly simple about a monster that wants to just blast you into oblivion. Things get needlessly complicated and sordid when it wants to bribe you into a change of lifestyle. Uh, I think I'll go and have a lie down.
Now, if you're listening to this tape, chances are you've bought some of Audiovisual's things, and either you're a glutton for punishment, or you actually like what you've been listening to. So, perhaps this is a good time to go back and find out exactly why Audiovisual's was started. Bill Bags. Sometime in was it May, I think, last year, a friend of mine and I had this nice idea that we should do something new. Um, so we thought, wouldn't it be nice to get um, some friends of ours together and do a play and see what would happen? Did you intend it just as a one-off play or a whole series then? Well, or what? we weren't sure then. We just wanted to do it for the fun of it. There was no intention to sell anything. It was purely and simply for fun. And we didn't know... We didn't know what was going to happen, basically. Nick, where did your involvement in all this come in? Because you weren't actually... In best Star Trek tradition, you weren't in the pilot. You came in in the, in the second one. Yeah. Why was that? Um, yeah, I, I, I remember that uh, I knew that something was going on when, when the first one was being done. And uh, I, was, I was writing a, a script at the time, a, a radio, an audio script based on the Doctor Who format. And uh, I kind of offered it to Bill, and we, we sort of talked about it, and I said something like, uh, yes, I wouldn't mind doing it, as long as I could write, direct, and star in it. <laughs> and, uh, and, Bill didn't say, and also, I thought I might be doing something else. And, and, so, and the next thing I heard, the space whale had been made, and I hadn't been involved in it. I went, I went away to London for a while, and when I came back, they played me a bit of this tape, saying, oh, listen to this, there's this computer. Good day, gentlemen. I hope this trip is pleasant. A pleasure to welcome you aboard. Seems very advanced. What a shame to waste it on this ship. Allow me to assure you, Guard Joba, that nothing is wasted here. I am linked with Central Base on Homeworld, where my original is located. I am but a minute extension. There is one of me in every ship on Homeworld's fleet. Can I help you, gentlemen? I thought, yes, they, they've got something off the ground here and I think I could contribute to it. So I didn't go into it totally blind. I'd, I hadn't heard Spacewell all the way through. The Spacewell wasn't actually completed until I'd recorded two stories, I think. I'm mm -hmm. not sure. Was it a bit frustrating for you if, if you'd done two of the plays? And sort of the first play came out and all the furore with it and all the publicity and promoting the space well and actually had sweet nothing to do with you. <laughs> Did you think, come on, get a move on and, and get my one out, or were you quite happy to see how the first one went? I wanted to see how the first one would go. And, and I felt that, not because I was in them, but, but, but I felt that the second one was going to be better. So I thought if there's, I was interested to see whether there was a favourable reaction to space whale because I thought, well, if the reaction to that's favourable, I'm sure it would be a little better for Time Ravages, which was, of course, the, the, the second one I recorded, not the, not the first one. That's what I'm doing, reporting. That was the uh, preliminary report, you see. We're here, and uh, you're there. Are you? What progress have you made? Good, good, you're there. We're here, you're there. Good, fine, that's it then, isn't it, really? We'll see you later. Exterminate! Ah, report, I see what you mean. You want to know about the time factor? Why, was, why did you choose to record Connection 13 before the Time Ravagers, although the Time Ravagers came out first? Well, we decided, I decided that I didn't want to do a regeneration story because uh, I didn't think we could pull it off. So uh, we went straight into doing Connection 13. And after we recorded Connection 13, Nick's friend, Arthur, came up with a... A very good idea. So we tried it out, recorded it, and it worked. So we used it in the end. But initially we didn't want to do, I didn't want to do a regeneration story because I didn't think we could put it off. I'd rather just play it down and uh, sort of have, you know, Stephen Payne couldn't play the Doctor anymore. We just bring Nick Briggs, in, Nick Briggs in playing, if you like, a, a different perspective of the same Doctor. Ah, Corporal, you've not seen my two young friends, have you? A boy and a girl, two arms and two legs. They're the saboteurs. You don't know that. She's right. This is nothing to do with me. And my two friends are quite harmless. If you hadn't started firing at them, we would have all been sitting down to a nice pot of tea by now. 
busy goings on in there, you know. Time mechanics is hot work. Tea up, is it? Whereas on the television series, they play the regeneration really up. You played it right down. Yeah, that's, we, I think we worked no, that, that was Arthur's out. idea, yeah. wasn't we, it? I, we just wanted a very good story, and the regeneration would be part of it. Mm. Arthur isn't really a Doctor Who fan, and he, he he'd seen a few Doctor Who stories, but his overall impression of the because there have been two regenerations quite close together on television, his impression was as a layman, that they'd um, concentrated quite a lot yeah. on the regeneration. Yeah. He thought, well, let's, let, I'm going to try and do it differently. Than this. That's what he said to me when I was badgering him. To write what was that? I'm afraid I know exactly what it is. We're toppling over the edge of a time abyss. I never thought of it as possible, but all the instruments confirm it. Hold on to something. How do you know so much about the TARDIS? Because, Greg, I'm the Doctor. But the doctor's dead. Well, for a dead man, I'm feeling remarkably well. This is all your fault. Hold on, we're going through a time distortion. You can't be the doctor. Just shut up and brace yourself. Hold on, we're going through a time distortion. I'm the doctor. I'm the doctor. I'm the doctor. It was a one-man science fiction show for Nicholas Briggs when he was uh, at uh, drama college. And uh, it was called The Last Revolution, and it involved him basically flying around the universe with lots of horrible creatures following him. Anyway, he remembered me from that. And uh, I've never really watched a lot of Doctor Who. I've seen the old episode here and, here and there. And, um, well, I thought it might be a bit of fun. Nick said to me, how about writing... Uh, a Dalek story. So uh, I put my mind to it. He, he played me a tape of uh, a Dalek story off, off the television. It was one of the John Pertwee ones. I, I don't know which one it was. I, I thought it was rather interesting. So I, I, I thought I'd give it a go. So I put my mind to it and I came up with the Time Ravages, which uh, I wrote very quickly <laughs> and uh, was mainly to do with uh, a great big... Uh, blob that travelled around through time and space called uh, the Temporon and, uh, and the, the Daleks' efforts to try and experiment on it. We would like people to send in their ideas and possibly we can sort of refer back to them and get some of these going. At the moment we've been lucky but, you know, we're now sort of running out of ideas. We're having to go to Arthur every five minutes and say, can you write us a script? We've run out of things. Poor old Arthur. Um, I, we're going to do three seasons see what the reaction is to that, and I think that will be enough, because we'll have had enough by then. We'll want to try something new, perhaps. We'll, mm. we'll see then. Um, we're aiming for three seasons of six stories now. It was initially going to be five, but we're going to play it for six, see what happens, and decide then. But that's all we're going for at the moment. Can you walk? Uh, no. Uh, uh, couldn't have been a, a laser. Well, there's no sign of burns. Oh, dear. Not much chance of fair dodging here, is there? No. Rather an unpleasant method, though. You know, I'm beginning not to like this place. Let's go back to the TARDIS. It's obvious that we can't get to the surface. Don't give up so easily. We have a very odd story for Story 4, which is the one on the other side of this tape, the conglomerate. Hmm. Where did the idea... Why did you decide to get Arthur again to do this very short two-hander? I hate don't think the characters have been explored enough. So I said to Arthur, let's have a, a character story. Let's have just the Doctor and just Greg and a couple of aliens who wouldn't have to say much at all and develop their character in a very convincing way. And I think that is the end of the conglomerate, is that result. Nick, it? how... I mean, you went to some extraordinary lengths to record the conglomerate. Oh, yes. Uh... <laughs> Tell us about those. <clears throat> well, um, when the script of conglomerate was finished... Uh, Nick Layton had had a look at it, and Nick does uh, recording, he's our sound man, and he saw that it was down in these subways and so on, and he said that he, uh, he said, we're not going to do it unless I can, uh, unless we can do it all down in a real subway. And we, uh, originally we were going to do the whole thing in a real subway in Southampton, not a, a tube subway, but uh, in a, a kind of underpass a thing. pedestrian subway. Yeah, that's right. And uh, so we spent a day going around, testing out subways in Southampton and making idiots of ourselves, running up and down steps and, 
and so on. Uh, and then uh, when it came to the, the time to record it, we actually recorded it the same weekend that we did Cloud of Fear. We recorded it after Cloud of Fear. Cloud of Fear is the next one to come out, by the way. Um, and it was freezing cold, and we had to get up really early so there wouldn't be any traffic noise. And Richard, who plays Greg, wasn't too keen on getting up early in the morning and uh, we, we had to drag him out of bed. He was very reluctant about that. And uh, I forgot my gloves. It was freezing cold and my hands were absolutely frozen. And we were all swapping gloves. Yes. Yeah, and we were all getting in a mood with each other and I was shouting at Nick because I had to have that map at the beginning and I kept rustling my script for the map, you see. And Nick kept saying things like, oh, stop rustling your script. And I'd be turning around saying, no, that's a map, you idiot. And it was all a bit fraught, really. And... We, we so wanted to get it done that we ignored a lot of car noises. And, of course, when we got back and listened to it, it was just mm, mm, lorries and cars going past. And, uh, you had to redo it, didn't but, you? Yeah, the yeah. whole thing was a complete and utter waste of time, unfortunately. We haven't got tickets. Oh, we'll just plead ignorance. Ah, <laughs> oh, we haven't got tickets. We'll just plead ignorance. Well, I'll leave the talking to you, then. Oh! We haven't got tickets. Ah, oh, we haven't got tickets. We'll just plead ignorance. Well, I'll leave the talking to you then. Thank you. It can't be far from the surface. No, now we're here. We might as well. Uh... The next train to arrive at this platform, platform three, will be the 2340 Trans Urban Line service to Rundium Square, calling at all stations. Lucky we didn't land on the lines. What do you mean, lucky? It's precision planning. Doesn't matter. There's a click, Nick. Yeah, but he said lucky over the click. Okay. Yeah. No, I mean. Well, let's just do it. Let's just do it. Click. Otherwise, we're going to get more noise. Right, noise. Click. Don't stop it. You know, unless I say so. Right. Because that would have been back. a really good all the way through take. If you force it. Uh, yeah. We'll have to do that again from where I suppose we'd better go. On to the next release, which is by Anlia. And it's called Cloud of Fear. <laughs> oh. What can you say about the Cloud of Fear? Well, I can say that, first of all, it was initially called Catacombs of Terror. Then it was going to be called the Scion of Oz. But it's difficult to fit yeah. on the tape cover, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, we had great problems with that, and I fell for Cloud of Fear. And there were several people who backed me up there, and there several people who were against it. Nick. Yes. Um, I think it's a terrible title. It, it, it's, it seems, having heard a, a sneak preview of it, it's possibly, of all the ones so far, it's the nearest to the blacker side of Doctor Who. It's the most mm. malevolent one. Mm. You've actually got a script which brings up terror to the fore, especially in the Doctor's case. Mm. We do see an awful lot in this story, even more so than the conglomerate of, mm. of your Doctor. That's right, mm. yes. The, the Doctor is confronted with... Uh, um, something which he finds very difficult to cope with, basically, and he goes through a little bit of a nervous breakdown, which is a very, very interesting thing for, uh, for me to do, and also very interesting uh, that uh, Alan thought of doing that in his script, considering that he is the main character, and, and really any development like that, in a way, has to be a trick on the 